Hey everyone, we are, we are live today with uh, Yang from Pink Up, and he's going to talk to us about Chaos Mesh. So, uh, how Yang, how are you doing? Okay, I have prepared for it. Are you, are you ready? Yes, I think everything is fine here. Okay. Uh, wh where are you located right now? Uh, I look at my screen. Uh, my camera is at the left bottom part of the screen. Maybe the S might be quite strange. <laughs> okay. No, I meant uh, where, where are you located in which, which city? Oh, oh I, am, I am in Hangzhou, China. Oh, there. okay. Cool, cool. Well, um, I will let you start your presentation and then uh, we will take questions if there are any. Oh, yes. I am in Hangzhou. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Perik. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Yang Kao, and I'm so glad to be here and give you guys an introduction to Chaos Smash. And also, thank you for joining me. Before I get started, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. I am a maintainer of Chaos Smash at PinCap during the last year. I was working on the operator architecture of Chaos Mesh by bringing in Kubel Builder, which is an open source tool to help you define and program with custom resources of Kubernetes. Then I worked on the development of network-related chaos and time-related chaos. This experience inspired me a fresh look at chaos engineering and Chaos Mesh. So I'm very glad to share it with you. OK, let's start. The following content maybe will refer to some terms of Kubernetes, Chaos Engineer, Linux system. So if I'm not clear enough or if you have any question, please ask in the chat room, and I will try, to, try my best to answer after this presentation. Today. I'm going to be talking about Chaos Mesh from the following aspects. The first is why we need Chaos Mesh. And then we'll talk about the key features of Chaos Mesh. I also want to show you some examples of Chaos Injection and the future of Chaos Mesh. All right. I guess most of you here today are developers or architects or maybe DBAs. So I have a question for you. What is the thing you least want to see at work? If there is no incident, I think the answer is an online incident. Yes, the nightmare for us. Here are two incident examples that I guess you are familiar with. The first one is an incident of AWS caused by severe weather at the loss of power. Though AWS is the leader of cloud services, it's not prepared for such a natural disaster. Excellent developers and technology of software engineering can decrease the possibility of bugs in software, but can do nothing on hardware outage or on natural disasters. The other example is about the service outage happened to GitHub. This is a great description of chaos. The loss of connectivity continue, continues only 43 seconds, but leads to a 24 hours of services degradation. As the software gets more and more complicated with the adoption of cloud computing and microservices, the damage of a small incident becomes quite unpredictable. But programmers are a group of people who never say die. What can we do for these incidents? How can we prepare for these incidents? Chaos engineering gives you an answer. Breaking your system productively. Well, you may agree that we need chaos engineering, which means we should inject error on a system and emulate incident on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. But how could we emulate the incident environment? How could we inject arrows to a running system? 
there are many different tools you may need. You may need S-Trace or BCC to inject system calls. You may need IP tables and IP set to emulate network partition. You need to understand the traffic control system of Linux and use TDF or Net Emulator and several tools to emulate low bandwidth and network latency. You may need fields to inject file system error. You need to use StressNG to burn your CPU or memory. You need to inject in different layers and different aspects. So you need a lot of different tools. You should also be careful with these tools because your application is running on the cloud, but most of these tools work on bare metal. If you try to use these tools manually, try to use these tools in a container, I bet that before you find bugs through the chaos, your brain will get chaos and burned. So if you are experiencing the difficulty to use chaos engineering in your situation, or if you are willing to give it a try, but haven't decided where to start, fortunately, Chaos Mesh came to the world. Chaos Mesh is a cloud native chaos engineering platform with a powerful chaos toolkit and friendly interface to use and program. These highlighted words are three key features of Chaos Mesh and are also the design targets of Chaos Mesh. Next, let's explore these features one by one. Firstly, let's talk about the cloud native. Cloud native is the most clear feature of them. Our softwares will run on the cloud, so we also should test them on the cloud. Kill Smash highly depend on Kubernetes. It runs in a Kubernetes cluster, and the components of it are scheduled by Kubernetes. Second, or Chaos Mesh experiments of Chaos Mesh are pod-wise or container-wise. We will not affect other services running on the same machine with the target pod or container unexpectedly. This feature brings us a lot of difficulty in development as the isolation ability of Linux processes is not enough. Though there has been namespaces and C groups and Chaos Mesh can be deployed with Helm, which makes the installation very fast and easy. As you can see, we install, we, we install the Chaos Mesh with only one line commands. OK, next. Chaos Mesh is also featured with a very friendly interface. All the Chaos experiments are managed as custom resources, which means if you are familiar with Kubernetes, you don't need any other language to create or cancel a pod experiment. The interface of Chaos Mesh is same with other resources such as pods or deployments. So you can create, delete, list the Chaos experiments in the same way with pods. You can use Kuba control to operate them just like here. You can also use Kubernetes Go client to manage it in a programmable way, just like I showed here. As a Chaos engineering platform, I believe the Chaos toolkits are the basis of its competitive strength. So here come the third key feature of Chaos Mesh, powerful Chaos toolkit. It's always on our first priority to collect the new demands and enrich our weaponry to break your system. Here, I listed several different Chaos tools provided by Chaos Mesh. We designed these tools to emulate different situations. With these tools, you will be able to drill many incidents before running in production, such as training for loose connect network connection, or training for kernel fault. 
then it's time to show you the clear and elegant architecture as the basis of these grid features. Hills Mesh contains a controller manager, which will watch all the Kills custom resources and perform Kills actions. When the specified kinds of resources such as network Kills or pod Kills, when they are created or updated, Kubernetes will notify the controller manager. Then the controller manager can get and read your Kills definition and runs the implementation of it. Kills Mesh will also deploy a daemon set to set up daemon on every node. This daemon will receive requests from controller manager and help it to operate the network or process in specific both namespace and C group. In some situation, Kills Mesh will also inject a sidecar container into a target pod. For example, in the implementation of IO Kills, the sidecar is needed to set up the customized file system. In the next part, I'd like to show you some example of chaos injection. I think network chaos is really a good start. Here is an example for network chaos. The left part is the injected pod. As you can see, the time cost of ping request gets high periodically. Besides the latency, Chaos Mesh can also inject packet loose and package duplication with the help of NetEM QDs. And Chaos Mesh can also shape bandwidth with TBF traffic control. What you need to do, what you need to do is only to modify the delay related field into other type of chaos. This can help you emulate different connection quality between multiple machines or multiple data center. The implementation of network chaos is quite straightforward. The controller manager will send a request to related chaos daemon. Then the chaos daemon will enter corresponding post network nemesis and run IP set, IP tables, TC, or any other needed commands. Uh, this is an example for time chaos. The left part is the logs of a timer running in a pod. The right part is the time chaos YAML file. As you can see, the time of timer jumps from 6 o'clock to 16 o'clock. The distributed systems are highly dependent on monotonically increasing time spans. For example, the NTP leap second has caused several accidents. The time skew is a kind of problems which developers for a distributed system have to concern about. In order to emulate time skew, we developed this kind of chaos. Keep in mind that our applications run on the clouds and the test shouldn't affect other processes running on the same machine. Setting system clock has nothing difficult but only set time for a single process or a single container is not an easy task. The implementation of time chaos is complicated. In short, we implement this with ptrees. The chaos daemon will use ptrees to load a fake clock at time function into process memory and overwrite the original clock at time function to make it jump to our prepared fake function. Then every cause to the clock get time function will be redirected to the fake function and get a modified time. Another common incident is hard drive failure. According to some research, the annually failure rate of hard drive is 1.8%. With the help of solid state drive and RAID, the annual failure rate may get lower, but it's still a problem. To emulate and prepare for this common situation, we need to know how our, how our applications perform with a broken disk or with low speed disk. As the disk IO is at really low layer, the testing result may be frightening. 
Here, we injected a 100 microsecond latency into every file system operation. The left part is the loop which runs cat to read a file and record the time. With the latency injected, the total time increased to 500 microseconds or 800 microseconds, which are multiple times of the initial value 100 microseconds. This effect will become more frightening because your application is not that simple like a cat. Your application must be more complicated. The 100 microseconds latency may cause 10 seconds wait or a timeout error for your end users. The implementation of IO chaos is based on fields. Chaos mesh will inject a sidecar container into the target pod by admission webhooks for pod. Then the sidecar will mount a custom user space file system. This file system will receive requests from Chaos Mesh through gRPC to add latency or error in I.O. operations. As the time is limited, I cannot show you every tools provided by Chaos Mesh. The Chaos tools left are also very brilliant, such as kernel Chaos to inject the kernel fault. I really hope you can try these tools after this talk. All right, let's move to talk about the future of Chaos Mesh. As a very young software, we have too much expectation on it. We hope it can have more and more useful tools. We hope the implementation becomes more stable and more elegant. But we regard these two targets as the most important. That's customizability and observability. If you look at a Chaos Mesh YAML file, you can see there are still rich space to customize. Chaos Mesh could support customizable Chaos. It's the best way to embrace the community. There are too many different running environments, and there are too many different technical choice. Chaos Mesh cannot cover every situation only with the effort from us, but with the help of the open source community, we can make it come true. It could support customizable selector. For example, to test the distributed database, you may want to select the leader of a raft group, but Kubernetes doesn't have this kind of information. So, Kill Smash should get it from application or plugins. The last part is customizable scheduler. I think this is somehow come true. Kill Smash has supported one shot kills, which means that if you apply a kills without duration and scheduler fails, this kills action will be applied immediately and will be recovered after it's deleted. So, any programming language with a Kubernetes client can be used as an extended scheduler. The other important part is observability. One of the greatest benefits that you can gain from chaos engineering is that you can observe how your application will perform before facing the incident. You can observe whether the impact of chaos is acceptable and then you can decide how to make progress for your application. As the Chaos Engineering Platform, I think it's the duty of Chaos Mesh to help you to learn to observe the impact of chaos. But how? We have prepared two answers for this question. We all agree that the Grafana is the most popular open source observability platform. We can provide Grafana plugins to integrate chaos events as annotations in your existing Grafana dashboards. With the help of this plugin, you can see the change of metrics such as QPS, TPS, latency, 
you can see this change change with chaos action running. Another solution is the dashboard of chaos mesh. We have developed a dashboard for chaos mesh. This dashboard provides a graphic interface to create, delete, archive, and observe chaos experiment. Okay, we have talked about a lot of technical things. Let's talk more, something more relaxing. As a very young software, during the last half year, we have got more than 1,900 stars on GitHub. 41 contributors joined us to develop Chaos Mesh. And I'm very glad and proud to share with you that we are currently in the process of onboarding with CNCF Sandbox and will soon announce it publicly. Finally, I really hope you can reach a bug free world. As a developer, I hope you can reach a world where nobody writes bugs. Hardware always works perfectly and kill smash is never did it. However, we all know it's impossible. Kill smash can do nothing on helping to write bug free code, can do nothing on fixing your broken hardware, but it can help you find hidden problems before running production. Okay, thank you everyone. Here is all my talk today. Do you have any questions? Oh yes, we can do CPU burn kills with the help of stress NG. We will, hey, have why? No, I haven't shown before. Uh, Sorry, let me, let me support this kind of kills. We support stress kills by entering the target pose C group and target pose PID namespace and run some some software such as stress ng to eat the to eat the CPU and the memory. What? What? Uh, no, I think I don't run it in a production environment. Though I though the discipline of chaos engineering asks us to run tests in production environment, but for a database company, it's too dangerous for us. And I and we run. We run chaos engineering for our company's product TidyDB. Do you know it's a distributed database? And we have integrated chaos mesh into our testing framework of TidyDB. And we run it every day. We run it continuously to find these bugs. Okay, I think the kills left are uh, stress kills you have asked about, and the pod kills is quite simple. The, the controller manager only send request to the Kube API server to stop this code. And the only thing left is the kernel kills. The kernel kills, we develop it with the help of eBPF and, the, <laughs> and when the user apply a kernel kills CMO file, the controller manager will send a request to the to a container to a sidecar container and the sidecar container will use eBPF to inject some kernel fault such as the arrow on the syscall or arrow on some uh, in, in kernel function calls. And I think they are all uh, added the kernel kills. I think they are all over tools, nothing more. Uh, I think the I think we only need Kubernetes to run it, and we have actually we have some some requirement for 
kernel configurations, but most kernel configurations fit it. Uh, we usually run it on CentOS, uh, both seven or eight, they are okay. Mm. And we have tested with Linux kernel version greater than 3.16 is they are or suitable for kills match to run. Okay, so um, that was a question, what kind of airbag and OS credentials are requested to run uh, by Vedavik? Um, is there any, any other question uh, from the chat? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Okay. I think people on the chat could not, could not hear me, but I think I think it's working now. Um, okay, so it looks like there is no other question. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, I think. Okay. Well, um, let me check. It's like there is no. Okay. So, well, um, thanks everyone for watching, and thank you, Yang, for the presentation. It was very interesting. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. All right. So, cheers, and see you next time. Okay.